on the road to the final. We have overcome all challenges. Whether it's been through our attacking prowess or our defensive strength, we have shown the courage of a true underdog. And today, we face our biggest challenge yet. Can we kill the giant that is PSG? Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Moving On Up with OGC Nice on Football Manager 2017 and today is the big day, it's cup final day, I'm all suited up in my blue suit for France, France playing blue so I thought I'd wear the blue suit and we are ready for Nice's second ever Coupe de la Ligue final. The first and only other final that they reached in this competition was back in 2005-2006 season where they ended up losing against AS Nancy. Now that one was played at the Stade de France. Today's cup final is being played in Bordeaux. I think that's because Paris Saint-Germain's home ground would be Stade de France so obviously it would be unfair to play there. Although looking at it they have played there several times in the past so I don't really know why we can't use that stadium but Hey ho! Now obviously at the end of the last episode we played our cup match and it was near the end of January but there was some transfer information, transfer information? No, there was some transfer business done in the gap between then and now. First off we'll start with a loan going out, Valentin Iseric has gone on loan to Wolverhampton Wanderers who are in the Premier League. Um, they've paid us a fee of £425,000, I think they can pay £3 million to buy him in, at any point during the loan spell. Uh, he's, you can see that he's played seven times, got one goal, not really performing very well for them. So don't know whether they will want to buy him, but if they do, they can get him for three million. Another loan going out is Alexi Bassetti. The striker has gone on loan to Vitoria de Gomereas, who I believe, are they Portuguese or are they? Yes, they're Portuguese. So they have paid a loan fee of 225,000 pounds. He's doing a bit better than Valentin Iseric. He's got four goals and eight appearances with an average rating of 6.85. I don't think he has anything written into his loan deal where they can buy him. And now for a permanent outgoing on Ordla Samba. You may remember I transfer listed him at the end of the last episode because he disappointed me so much in that cup match against Stade Lavalois and we ended up selling him. We sold him for £2 million to AC Ajaccio. And he's played seven times for them, got two goals, one assist, average rating of 6.63 in Ligue 2. So, whatever. Good riddance, I guess. And the final outgoing is Jefferson, the left-back, who I've been trying to get rid of for pretty much all of the January transfer window. He finally left. He's gone to RC Lens. I think he left for 1.2 million with 1.4, with the possibility of rising up to 1.4 million pounds. He's played five times for them so far, got an average rating of 7.3. No goals or assists as of yet, but he seems to be doing the business for them, so good luck to him. Now we head on over to the incomings. There's only two of them. I wasn't really expecting to do any more business. This guy was purchased by my director of football, Kevin Collin. I think that's how you would pronounce that name. 16-year-old Frenchman. Uh, attacking midfield centre is his best position. You can see he's been improving in a lot of areas. Got potential to be a key member of the first-team squad. We... Brought him in for £135,000 from Sochaux Montbilliard of Ligue 2. And he's, he's played a few times for our reserves. Got a goal and an assist. Average rating of 7.1. Not too shabby, really. And then the final incoming is this German national, Eamon Barcock. Now, I found an article called Hipsters FC on offside.co.uk. So that's www.off-side.co.uk. And they basically, the, the guy that wrote the article, he picked some players that are kind of not that well known, but are, have got lots of potential to be good players. And this guy was one of them, Eamon Barcock. I'd be playing him as a right back, I would believe, unless I change the formation to include some wingers. But he's pretty competent at right back. You can see his attributes have been improving a lot. Um, 
obviously a right back you probably need to be a bit better with marking and tackling but he's, he's been playing okay when I've played him there you can see he's played twice got an average rating of 6.4 really I think I'm probably gonna have to adjust the formation to fit him in um, but that'll come with time he's obviously only 19 years old uh, a bit of first team football will give him some good experience and hopefully allow him to improve further but things are looking good for Amen Barcock. Incidentally, if you do want to check out that article from Offside Football, then I'll leave the link in the description below. I think there's been another article released for the Hipsters FC11, because the article that was released was only for defenders. There's been one released since that is for midfielders and attackers, so I'll leave that in the link in, in the description below as well. So if you want to check that out, go ahead. Some interesting players there. See if you can grab them for a bargain like I did with Eamon Bork. I got him on a free transfer. He'd uh, been released by Frankfurt at the end of the 2017 season. And I managed to pick him up this January. So see if you can get one of these hot prospects in on a free as well. Now, since last episode, where we played that cup match against Stade Lavalois and were knocked out on penalties, we've played nine matches. The first of which was away to Olympique Lyonnais, who we beat in the semi-final of the Coupe de la Ligue, if you remember. And we unfortunately couldn't repeat that. We ended up losing 1-0 thanks to an Alexandra Lacazette goal. We were probably the... the the worst team on the day. Leon just had too much for us and we we didn't really get going. Then followed a tough game against the team that we're playing in the final today, Paris Saint-Germain. Now, I've took some tips from this match as we went 3-0 down. Pastore got a goal, Cavani got two. We were 3-0 down at one point. I switched things around, did some tactical changes. I made a note of them and saved them. So hopefully they can enable us to win today. Because once I did those changes, Eros Djurjevic managed to get himself two goals. And we were so close to equalising the game. It would have been such an unbelievable comeback. But we did well to bring it back to 3-2, in all honesty. Eros Djurjevic getting himself man of the match as well for his two goals. We were way behind Paris Saint-Germain in the first half. And in the early going to the second half, but we woke up at about the time that Judovic scored, at the, around the time that I made those changes as well, and we, we looked good. We looked like we could possibly beat Paris Saint Germain. We then faced FC Lorient, and there was two goals within the first ten minutes in this one. Cyprien getting the first for us to make it one 0 but Lindsay Rose equalised on the ninth minute, and then FC Lorient went two one up thanks to Majid Waris, and I was getting a bit concerned. Twenty fourth minute. We were on top in the game, so I did think that if we kept making chances, we would get a goal, and that turned out to be true with Eli Yuan getting an equaliser on the 68th minute, and then Mattia Vitali scoring the winner with seven minutes to go on the 83rd minute. We had 29 shots, 16 on target, 63% of the possession. We were just in charge of this game, and we really, really shouldn't have let them score the two goals, in all honesty. But we still managed to win, and Cyprian managed to pick up a Player of the Match award. One goal, one assist. Djurjevic getting an assist, which is pleasing to see. If he's not scoring, it's good that he's making goals. Then after the high amount of goals in the games previously, we played out a 0-0 draw against Angers. Emil Kraft picked up a Man of the Match award with a 7.4. Not really much to say about this game. We had 16 shots, but only managed to have three on target. Our better players weren't really on their game today. Clayton and Djurjevic having a bit of a... A rest, I'm guessing, on the pitch. Eamon Barcock, you can see our new signing, didn't perform too well at a 6.2. That is something I'm going to have to look at next season. Um, I, it's probably time that we do implement some form of wingers anyway, so we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. But that's for next season. We'll get back to the games. And the next game was against Montpellier, away from home. Uras Djurjevic on the score sheet yet again. Nice goal for him. With seven match rating for him as well. Um, their goalkeeper got player of the match. Which I guess is because we tested him 20 times. Well, we tested, we had a shot, 20 shots, nine on target. 51% of the possession. We were on top in this game and fully deserved our victory. Then we beat Mets 2-1. Uros Djurjevic once again on the score sheet with a brace on the 53rd and 77th minute after coming back from a goal down thanks to Franco Shervi of FC Mets. Uros Djurjevic picking up that player of the match award deservedly for his brace. Cunningham getting an assist as well as Remy Walter. And Djurjevic just seems to be a really good striker. I mean, he was top scorer in the Serbian league, was it? And he looks like he can do the business in any league. 
Our last game before the international break was a tough one at home against AS Monaco. We had more shots than them, more possession, but we couldn't make that count. And with 12 minutes to go, we ended up conceding to a Gil Diaz goal. Very disappointing. We probably deserve to get a draw at least, but our defence letting us down. Then we had the international break and I decided to organise a friendly against lower opposition just to give us a bit of, to keep our fitness up and maybe increase our morale a little bit. And we had five different scorers in a 5-0 victory over Istres West Province. Roman Perraud opening the scoring on the 6th minute, Jean Terrell scoring just a minute later. Patrick Benteke, one of our youth players, one of our young, he actually, he signed for us in the summer if I'm remember correctly he does have the potential to be pretty damn good he managed to get himself a goal iris tiero kurzawa scored on the 33rd minute and there was a bit of a, a gap before the next goal which was dante on the 66th minute but a pretty nice victory against lower opposition and then our final game that led us in to this cup final was against sm cayenne now they took a lead on the first minute thanks to ronnie Rodolin. But fortunately, Urus Djurjevic equalised for us in the 35th minute, then Cyprien put us 2-1 up in the 39th minute. We did, however, concede an equaliser early in the second half, thanks to Julian Ferre, and I thought things were just going to peter out from there. But that's not what happened. Roman Perraud came off the bench and managed to get his first ever goal for Nice on the 82nd minute. I have recalled him from a loan spell. I can't remember who he was at loan at, but he was out on loan at the beginning of the season. We managed 31 shots in this game, 14 on target, which is nearly 50%. Not the best, but if we're having 31 shots and that means we're having 14 on target, I'm fine with that. Um, possession of 65% is pretty unreal. Our possession has been very, very good. We just need to try and make it count a bit more. Obviously, conceding two isn't the best, but we still managed to win. And Urus Djurjevic picking up yet another Player of the Match award. One goal, one assist. Remy Walter has some competition for most Player of the Match awards now, I would say. Remy hasn't picked up a player of the match award in quite some time. Maybe he can do it today in the cup final. I've just taken a look at the matches that Paris Saint-Germain have played in the past few games. They are in pretty good form. Since that 1-0 defeat against Bastia, they have beaten Bordeaux 3-0, beaten Barcelona in the Champions League 2-1, beaten Nantes 3-2 and beaten Bayern 1-0 in the Champions League. So Paris Saint-Germain in some pretty good form. Um, if anything, it might be in our favour that they've just played midweek against Bayern and then they have Bayern again this coming midweek. So perhaps they're gonna rest some players. I say, hopefully. So this is the lineup that we're going for, going with for this Final against Paris Saint-Germain. Now this is the formation that we used when we changed it to get those two goals back against Paris Saint-Germain in the league. And I've been using this formation since then and it's been pretty good. I mean, we picked up quite a few wins from it. Um, instructions are push higher up and get stuck in. Standard mentality and it's a 4-1-2-1-2 formation. So we have Johan Cardinal in goal. Johan Andrew is our right back. Tioro Kurzweil and Le Marchand in central defence as always. Cunningham at left back. Cyprian in defensive midfield. Remy Walter and Mattia Vitali are the two in central midfield. Clayton is our one attacking midfielder today playing as a shadow striker. Djurjevic is our defensive forward who's been creating quite a few goals as well as scoring some himself. And then Roman Perraud who scored a goal in the last game and impressed me coming off the bench replacing Yuan has earned himself a start for this cup final and he's playing as a poacher now Juan Carlos was so close he's so close to being fit enough expected to be out for another six days and two weeks I would have loved for him to be able to play today but it's just not meant to be hopefully we can get the victory in his memory shall I say not in his memory we'll get the victory for him and hopefully win our first ever cup competition so Paris Saint-Germain are expectedly the four to five favorites for this one we are three to one it draws two to one our key man is Dante the center back it says he we've only conceded 16 goals in the 18 games that he's played and he is on the bench today but obviously I'm um, giving Tiara Kurzawa his place in the team because Dante is quite old and then PSG's key man is Edinson Cavani, the striker with 11 goals in 23 games so far this season. He's going to be a man that we have to watch carefully.
if he is indeed playing. It's going to be interesting to see who Paris Saint-Germain have picked. Have they picked a full-strength squad, considering they've got buy-in in about four days' time? And the answer to that is kind of, but kind of not. So they, they do still have Cavani playing up front. Um, they've got Hesse in attacking midfield. I don't think he's normally a starter. There's no Coutinho as far as I can see. Angel Di Maria is playing, Verratti's playing, Kurzawa, Thiago Silva, Marquinhos, Widmer. It's a pretty good Paris Saint Germain lineup. They've got Mangala, Krichaviak, Gaia, and Lucas Maurer on the bench. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be very, very tough. Hopefully, we don't embarrass ourselves. I'm not sure if we lose whether we still get qualification for Europe. I'm going to use the revenge team talk because we have struggled against Paris Saint-Germain every time that we've played them. So fingers crossed we can do this and get a victory in this cup final. Come on! I'm suited and booted and ready to win. Okay, Hesse's got the ball at the back for Paris Saint-Germain. Hopefully they give it away to us somehow. Um, they don't. Cavani flicks that on to Hesse, who's at left midfield. Plays that forward to Diaby. Now it's Verratti. Need to get a foot in. Oh, he's so close to tackling him. Well, Vidma's got it. There's a man over on the right-hand side. Castellio is that man. Central to Verratti. Forward to Diaby. And Paris Saint-Germain just look untouchable at this moment in time. Hesse, back to Verratti. Out wide to Kurzawa, who's in plenty of space. Cut inside. Castillo's there, and it's 1-0 after two minutes. Samu Castellio. With the second goal of the season and not the start that we wanted. I'm going to assertively demand more. Paris Saint-Germain are all over us. Right, Cyprian with a free kick. Can we get something against the runner play? Walter to Cunningham. Can he cross it? He does. Clayton's there and Clayton scores. We've equalised completely against the run of play. Clayton gets his 10th goal of the season. Our first shot of the game produces our first goal. After 15 minutes, so nervous here. Cardinal with a long ball upfield towards Perot. Doesn't win it though. Thiago Silva wins it instead. But Vitali's got it now. We just need to keep the ball. Andre to Vitali. He played an easy ball, lads. Come on. Andre with a long ball to Perot. He wins it. Clayton's got it, but he's lost out to Verratti. That was a terrible touch from Clayton. Hesse's got it. Left side of midfield. Andre with a tackle. Excellent tackle from him. Vitali's got it. Now it's Walter to Cyprien. Le Marchand, take your time, Cunningham, forward to Clayton, who's in a bit of space, we've got him behind the midfielders, but they've got back well, Djurjevic now, to Vitali. now Perraud, to Clayton, Clayton shoots, oh my word, what a goal, that goal would be worthy of winning any cup final, Clayton with his second goal of the game, and it's an absolute cracker, how on earth did that go in, Clayton, you absolute legend, Please go two ahead. Come on. Oh, Vidmas headed away. Perraud. Chiro was there, but Trap has collected it. I thought we were going to just nod that in. I thought Kurzawa was just going to be there in front of the keeper and just flick it over his head and give us a two-goal lead. But it wasn't to be. And Di Maria's got a free kick. Di Maria, what a free kick. Now, if our goal was special, that was just something else. That right out of the top draw from Angel Di Maria was 14th goal of the season. And we're back on level terms. Thankfully, the halftime whistle has come so we can speak to our players and make sure they're not too down about just conceding there at the end of the first half. I'm very happy with the performance. Um, I'm happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. Most of them looking delighted. Cardinal's probably feeling a bit bad considering he's conceded too, which is why he's not really reacting. But we're all playing pretty well, apart from Tiara Kurzawa and Johan Andrew. Uh, Tiara Kurzweil well, has in fact got pretty poor condition, so it could be a good time to bring on some experience in the centre of defence in the form of Dante. Now, nothing against you, Tiara Kurzweil, well, but you're not performing well. You're a bit tired, and I think Dante is just gonna he's gonna be able to steady the ship, hopefully. I am concerned about Johan Andre at right back as well, but I don't want to change too much just yet. Just change Vitali's role to an advanced playmaker on attack. I had a look at this analysis thingamajig and I just thought that maybe one of the centre midfielders could move up a bit. 
happens. It is quite cramped in there. Possibly he's got the space for Tali to just push up a tiny bit and that might encourage Clayton to push on further as well. That's my thinking behind that move anyway. Uh, as you can see on the stats just before we get into the second half, we have had 11 shots, 6 on target. We've had more shots than them and we are currently in charge of possession. Hopefully we can win this, come on. Free kick in a great position. Clayton crosses it. Lamarche on back post. Dante! Dante scored. The substitute scored. We're 3-2 up. You couldn't write this. Dante, a, a legend, the 35-year-old central defender has put us 1-0 up after coming on at half-time. The question now is when do we contain or do we go two ahead? Clayton with the ball in. Thiago Silva clears it. But Clayton's got another chance. Crosses it back post. Oh, it's deflected. It's gone in. It's 4-2. Marquinhos with an own goal, and Nice, I'm not even, I don't even want to say it, are we on our way to our first ever Coupe de la Ligue Cup? I realise I just said Cup twice, once in English and once in French, but it's high emotions. Come on, okay, um, we've got a corner, and I've just pressed the button to make a substitution, so I'll do that. It's going to be Andre, he has improved his performance in the second half. But we'll bring on Emil Kraft, our backup right back. And we have a corner. Clayton is about to whip the ball in. I'm prepared. Okay, let's go. Clayton with a corner. Djurjevic is there, but Trap collects it. Is this going to be a counter attack for Paris Saint Germain now? Trap with a long ball forward. Nobody there for Paris Saint Germain. Andre takes it down nicely. Now it's Dante, one of the goal scorers. It's Lamarchan. Great pass to Vitali. Now it's Perraud. Roman Perraud holding the ball up nicely, plays it to Walter, forward to Djurjevic. Djurjevic goes around his defender, now it's Clayton, can he pass it through? He can, Perraud's there, Perraud shoots and it's in! What is going on? It's 5-2! Oh my god! <laughs> what on earth? We are winning 5-2 against Paris Saint-Germain. I'm actually speechless, this is unbelievable. Five minutes left, just about. We'll, we'll make our final sub. Um, I mean, this is just out of time-wasting a little bit, I guess. We'll bring on Ellie... Oh, no, we're going to bring on the youngster. We're going to bring on Eric Borio. And we'll bring him on for Remy Walter in central midfield. Because surely we can't concede three goals in five minutes. Di Maria with the corner of Paris Saint-Germain. Could they get one back? They have. They've got a minute to get two goals. Now, that's surely not possible. Edinson Cavani scored that one. Okay, we've got a free kick. Clayton with the ball in. Can we get another? No, it's headed away. And that's the full-time whistle. And we've won the bloody Coupe de la Ligue. We've beaten Paris Saint-Germain 5-3. Clayton with a deserved player of the match award. And we've won a trophy. We are in the Europa League for next season. Who the hell would have thought that? We haven't beaten Paris Saint-Germain in God knows how many games. And we just we go and do it. We do it when it matters. We do it in the cup final. We do it in style. Five goals against the French champions is unbelievable. It was really special. No one gave us a chance. You played magnificently. Congratulations. Oh my God. I think it's the lucky suit. It's got to be the lucky suit. Clayton... Joint top goal scorer with four goals. And we turned that around completely. Paris Saint-Germain were all over us in the, the first part of the first half. But we managed to turn it around. 55% possession, 19 shots, 9 on target. And we kept PSG relatively quiet. I mean, conceding three against them is keeping them relatively quiet. This is unbelievable. They've just beaten Barcelona and Bayern in the Champions League. And then we go and beat them. And there's confirmation we've qualified for the 2018 Europa League by winning the Coupe de la Ligue and we will enter at the third qualifying round. And unsurprisingly, ESPNFC.com have named us as the biggest overachievers in the competition. Where were we expected to reach? I can't remember now. The fourth round. We managed to surpass that, didn't we? My greatest achievement so far on Football Manager 2017 is winning the Coupe de la Ligue. So, after all that brilliance, 
we still have some games left in the league to play. We have six games left to play. We can finish as high as third, which would be Champions League football, but that's not very likely because it would involve us winning practically all of the rest of our games and the three teams above us losing. So that's not very likely. We could, however, reach fourth place. I would say that's pretty likely. Now, what does fourth place get us? That would get us a Europa League group stage spot. Now, we currently have a third qualifying round spot, which is what you would get if you finish fifth or sixth in the league anyway, depending on the winners of the Coupe de France and us, the Coupe de la Ligue. But I think if we aim for fourth position, that would be very nice indeed. That would be an added bonus to this, what I would say is a very successful season so far for Nice. If you look at the expectations, we're expected to finish in the top half. We're doing that comfortably at the moment, barring some form of massive decline. Um, if we ignore the Coupe de France, because we didn't reach our target in that, but then Coupe de la Ligue winning that, we're doing really well. This is the best I've done on this game so far, and hopefully it continues. So next episode, we will do the final game of the season against Lille. We'll run down what's happened since the cup final. So in these games here against St Etienne, Bastia, Bordeaux, Nantes and René. Stad René, sorry, not just René. René is a name. I'm not just playing against one girl. That would be pretty unfair. So we'll just have a quick look at the teams that we do play offline. We've got St Etienne who are fifth. So that is a big, big game. That's our next match. If we win that, we go above them. That is a massive game. And we've got Bastia, who are third. And Bordeaux, who are 12th. Who, that should be a bit of an easier game on paper. I mean, we beat them 5-0 on the run we had in the cup to reach the final. Nantes are 20th. They'll be fighting for survival, I would imagine. And Stade Rene are 7th. So they're in and around us. So we've got some tough games to play offline. Hopefully, we can pick up victories in all of those and just... Bounce back off this amazing cup victory and give us a good run into the end of the season. And you never know, we might reach third spot. That third place, I would be chuffed to bits with. Fourth place is what I'm aiming for. Hopefully we can get it. But that is it for this episode. And what an episode it's been. An amazing cup final victory over PSG. And we've got our first trophy as Nice manager. Hopefully we can push on to get fourth place or maybe even third place in the Champions League spot for next season. But... For now, please hit the like button if you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to leave a comment below. Subscribe to my channel to get all my content when it comes out. And I'll see you next time.